I want to say welcome. My name is Ken. If, uh, if, you don't, if, you, if you don't know me or who, if you haven't been here before, I want to welcome you. If you chose to worship with us and this is your first time or if you're joining us online, uh, I just want to say welcome. Uh, if it is your first time, there's some connection cards in the seat backs in front of you that we would love for you to fill one out. One of the things that we love to do is to meet you uh, and answer any questions that you might have. So if you'll fill that card out sometime during the service, and as you go out the front doors, there's a table on the right. There's some awesome people there that want to meet you. They have a, a gift for you just to take with you and, uh, and enjoy. Uh, again, I'm just really thankful you're here. Amen? Amen. Y'all all right? Yeah. It's turned cold on us again. I'm not real happy about it, but not much I can do about it either. So, uh, so we'll just endure, right? Um, we are, uh, I'm excited. We're starting a new series this month. Uh, we came out of our detox series last month and going into this one, which we call Life Hacks. We want to kind of, um, I don't know, in sort of a relaxed and fun way, talk about some life lessons that come from things that, uh, that we may do. I, I want to share this morning particularly about, uh, about probably something that I did in my life that, that really um, challenged me but also taught me a lot, so I want to share that. Um, but, but the reality is, is that uh, as spiritual as we uh, are, we are also living in a natural world, amen? And God loves to use the things that we go through to teach us. So sometimes you'll go through something and you'll think that, that it's just, you know, we, we get this, I don't know if you get this way, I do, like, why does it have to be so hard? Or how does it, why does it have to be so complicated? Or how come I can't just get this done? Or why does it feel like I'm always, uh, you know, what do they call it? Uh, I, I use the analogy of why does it feel like I'm always trying to push a chain? You know what I mean? Like, be easier to drag it, but for some reason, I feel like I'm pushing it. And so uh, we get into these rhythms sometimes and we fail to realize that God's using everything that happens to you and I here and now to teach us things. So God will teach you things about parenting um, by, by, by some other thing that has nothing to do with parenting. He'll teach you something about marriage. You'll be doing something totally different, but, but the Lord will speak to you through it. And, uh, and I wanted to just kind of uh, dive into this idea and, and it's good because for us, uh, sometimes we don't, we don't take the time to connect the dots, right? Uh, so I've enjoyed kind of preparing for this Sunday because it, it forced me to connect some dots. Um, it was probably, I'm, I'm bad with years, but I think it was 1994. Some of you weren't even born yet. That was okay. Uh, when the Lord impressed upon me to do something that I had never done before. Never. Never thought about it. It wasn't... I didn't come from a family that did it. I'd never messed with this stuff before. But my wife and I were uh, looking for a house. We looked for houses. We did this, did that. And the Lord uh, impressed upon me, and it was the Lord. And I wasn't very mature then in the Lord, but I knew he was talking to me. And, and he was like, build a house. And I was like, I don't know how to build a house. This is a problem, right? Um, so I began to talk about building a house. And lo and behold, uh, my, my then brother-in-law was, uh, he was a farmer, but as many of you know, farmers, they seem like they know how to do everything. And so I start talking to him. I feel, I feel like I need, maybe I just need to build a house. He goes, yeah, that'd be fun. Let's build a house. I was like, what do you mean let's build a house? He said, I'll help you build a house. It's like, how does somebody just help you build a house? Like, do you have time for that? Is that, like, are you, are you saying I'll help you, but like, you're going to act like you're going to help me? But then I, no, no, I'll help you. I'll teach you all this stuff, you know. He's like, we'll do it. It won't be a big deal. And I'm thinking, oh, it won't be a big deal, huh? Okay. And I'm feeling about like you are right now. That doesn't sound right, right? Something about this doesn't sound right. But I said, okay, so here's what we do. I said, I, I need to start. We need to figure out what kind of house we want to build, where we want to build it. So we went out and we found a place we wanted to build the house. We made an offer on the lot and that worked and, and we paid off the lot. And then, you know, it came time to get a house. And I don't know if, if y'all ever tried this, but when you go to a bank and you say, Hey, I want to build a house and I want you to give money to do it. What is their first question? Are you a builder? Do you have a builder? Anything about a builder? And I'm like, no, I'm just going to build it myself. And they said, well, how many houses have you built? Um, well, none. Uh, you, you ever done any, con no, never done any construction. And they said, how are you going to do this? I said, well, my brother-in-law is going to help me. And that's what they did. They laughed. They're like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, and so I went to bank after bank after bank. Finally, I walk into this one bank, and this is kind of like my last ditch effort, right? I go into the bank, and I have my plans, and I say, I need this much money. And the lady looks at me and goes, okay. And I'm thinking, what? You know, like I was, I was totally prepared for the no, you know, because at first, listen, this is how we do. 
I felt very, very passionate about it. I'm like, man, you know, the Lord told me to build a house. I came up with plans. I'm buying, God's doing amazing things. And I was amazed at what God was doing and all this stuff. And then I went to a couple banks. The first one I walked into, they looked at me and said, no one's going to loan you money. And you know what I did? I said, you know what? The Lord has told me to build this house. I said that to them. I said, and somebody's going to give me the money. And they said, yeah, but not us. That's what the guy said, not us. I said, okay. So I picked my plans up. I'm going to show this guy, right? Well, you know, after you get smacked down about five or six times, you know, you're walking into the bank. You're like, I need to get some money. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, fine. What? Right? Like, okay. Okay, good. So we got money and we're good. We're good to go. And then I, I realized that I had gone enough steps that I'm in this thing now. And something's going to happen that, that I'd never, I didn't know how to do it. No idea. And so... I was a little bit afraid um, and thought I was a little bit crazy. Uh, just to add on top of this, I didn't have a job, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Lord sometimes will impress you to do some crazy things. And I don't know what he did to that lady at the bank, but I hope he doesn't ever do it to me. I mean, because she was crazy to give me the money. I didn't have a job, never built a house. It's like, all right, here we go, right? So I decided I'd come up. Uh, with, with a little bit of stuff. Oh, so that's the first one I did. So I did the first one. I had help. The second one I built was, uh, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I think it was as much God, but also a challenge uh, to, uh, to see, you know, okay, well, you've done this. Um, me building that house led me to realize that I really enjoyed doing it. So I had, after that, I had worked about a year with a, with a guy that I knew that was a contractor building houses, doing all kinds of stuff. So I had, I had kind of learned about how to do some things. So I went to build my, my next house, and it was, it was me, right? My brother-in-law wasn't, wasn't around at the time. I didn't have much help. Um, in fact, my, my construction crew consisted of me, my father, and my wife, right? And so, um, and so I had some very highly qualified, excellent help, I will say. <laughs> Uh, who oftentimes thought I was insane, and they'll tell you that. But I decided to take both the experience of building both those houses and to break it into uh, my top ten list about, about building a house. Okay, so you guys ready? Uh, first, number ten, is that sandwiches taste the best with a little bit of sawdust and when it's 100 degrees outside. They really do. I just, I, I just, I can, you know, he's laughing because he knows sandwiches are good when you're working, right? Uh, do things right the first time. These will transcend construction, by the way. Uh, do things right the first time. The second time isn't as much fun. <laughs> Don't trust the ladder that is supported by a sand pile. <laughs> which leads to my next one, which is it's not the fall that gets you. It's what you fall on that gets you. Get your hands and everything else out of the way while using a nail gun. Good advice. Uh, next one is, is you compromise when you're weary, so know when to take a break. That one will work everywhere. Know your limits. Push them, but not too far. <laughs> That'll come back and get you too. Just because it seems impossible, it's not. Storms happen, so relax. And plans. Make them and follow them. To the T. All right? Talk a little bit about this. Some of these are obvious. Get out of the way of a nail gun. Yeah, those things make sense, right? Uh, but I was kind of thinking about, about my mindset. I told you I started in, in 94. It was kind of mid to late summer we started that house. In December of 1994 here in Wayne County, we had one night. It actually uh, it warmed up. It was December, and it warmed up to about, I want to say, 85, 88, close to 90 degrees one day. And, and the next day, I think the high was supposed to be like 30, right? So at night, there, we had a night here in December. I can't remember what day it was, mid to late December of 94, where there were straight line winds all over the county of like over 100 miles an hour and all this stuff, right? Some of you remember that. It was a crazy night. There were tornadoes, all kinds of stuff. Well, my house had been built. This was a beautiful two-story house. So it had everything framed, right? And the roof was on it. And, and we were like, well, we'll just cover it up so it doesn't get wet tonight. It's going to be windy and stuff. Put, so put the light things away. I got a phone call from my neighbor who I barely knew. And he said, Ken, I don't know how to tell you this, but your house is gone that night. And I was like, well, what do you mean gone? Like, what does that mean? You know, he's like, it's not there. I'm like, the whole thing? He goes, no, no, no. What used to be your house is there, but it's gone. I'm like, okay, we'll get in the car and drive out there. So we drove up, 
and what was a beautifully framed two-story, I mean, months and months of work, uh, was in a pile, just gone, right? <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, I didn't know how to react. I didn't know whether to be mad, sad, to cry, to run, to shake my fist at God, or thank God, or I didn't know what to do. So I was like, well, okay, you know. But the, the whole lesson in it was, right, was that uh, you have to persevere sometimes. Sometimes, it's not because I did wrong, it's not because I had, you know, gone against anything, but the bottom line is, is that storms happen. You and I will go through them. Stuff's going to get blown down. It's, you, you're going to have somebody's going to call you one day and tell you, hey, your house is blown down. And, and you're going to have to digest that, right? It might be a house. It might be any other bad news. But you have to, you have to realize how you approach it is, is what's going to matter, right? Here's what I knew. I knew we had a mess. I knew we had to clean it up. I knew we had to get all that other stuff out of there. But I knew that there was something that, that was, a, here was the good news in it. The one thing that survived the whole thing was the foundation. So I'm like, okay, we got a foundation, right? We'll start from there. So we tried to straighten the floor up, and we did this stuff. And, and sure enough, you know, we built, rebuilt the house, refinished, you know, what we had done, got there, moved on, and done those things. And, and, the, and the point being is that, is that that can be, like I said, it can be construction. It can be your marriage. It can be a job situation. It can be a, re, you know, relationship of some kind. It can be anything where all of a sudden what you think you have is gone, and you've got to decide, what do I want to do? Here's what I knew. I knew God still had told me to build it, so I couldn't abandon it. Uh, I, knew that, I knew that it was going to be a lot of work, but I also knew that, that in it, somehow God was going to do something interesting. At the end of the day, uh, I got mad. I got really mad whenever I was getting the, the uh, they call it a construction loan with the bank, um, because she said, well, out, outside the loan, you need to pay me uh, $500 before we can finalize the loan. I said, for what? She says, for builder's risk insurance. And I'm like, builder's risk, what does that mean? She said, well, if something happens. I'm like, well, nothing's going to happen. And I'm mad, you know, I'm like kicking dirt. Here I'm trying to get a loan to build a house, and I'm like, where am I going to come up with $500, right? So I write the check, $500. That $500, that was a pretty good investment, you know, because I did have some builder's risk that I didn't even know about. And as, as it turned out, I ended up coming out, you know, because I was building it. We were doing it ourselves. Well, they paid me for the material and the labor. So I got paid, you know. I was like, oh, good. So what sounded like a catastrophe where you want to cry and run actually turns out, you know, uh, in the scheme of things, even though that, uh, you know, they adjusted. They didn't pay me prime rate. They paid me actually more like what I was worth, you know, like a guy who didn't know how to build a house. And uh, <laughs> they're like, well, because you're building it, we're not, you know, you don't have receipts for labor, so we'll give you a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. So it worked fine. But the point being that... Uh, that in the scheme of things, God has a way somehow of working things out for us whenever we go and do things that, here's the other point, that seem impossible but aren't. See, I'm going to tell you this. This is, this is the big lesson that I learned from building houses. People ask all the time, well, how, well, how do you do that? I don't know how you do it. Here's what I know. I know that houses aren't as hard to build as people, people make it look. I do know that, right? Um, but I also know this. I know that, that it takes a little bit of crazy sometimes to listen when God tells you to do something that's impossible. It takes just a little bit of you saying, hey, number one, listen and make sure it's God. Make sure it's not tacos or pizza late at night. Make sure that you say, okay, hey, what's the Lord telling me to do? And then, and then just go with it. Mine started out with me saying to other people, I just think, I don't know, I think I should build a house. That's how it started out. And by having that conversation, somebody jumped on board and said, yeah, let's build a house. And then all of a sudden, uh, yeah, I'll give you the money. And yeah, yeah, well, I'll sell you that lot. And all these different things began to happen really without me forcing the issue. I didn't muscle my way through it. It was just like, you know, I, I began to embrace the dream a little bit, right? Uh, and then I began to share the dream a little bit. And then other people got in on the dream a little bit. Next thing you know, here me and my wife are laying on our bed the first night in that house. And I'm thinking, there is no way this happened, right? Now, it took over a year, but I was in shock. I was like, there's no way that we're laying in a house that, 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 that we built. No way. It just doesn't happen that way. Oh, gosh, I got to get a job right? My goodness. So, so here's the deal. God's going to whisper things to you that seem impossible, and you can't rely on the world's wisdom, okay? Now I'm going to jump forward to my second house and tell you a couple of lessons I learned in that, because I went into that one a little more confident, right? I walked into the bank, and I, you ever done this before? Yeah. 
Yeah. In fact, you gave me the money to do the first one. You know, I went back to the same trough. They, yep, sure, we'll do it. We'll do it. I was like, we're going to be good, not worried about it. It's going to be great. We're, we're going to have fun. It's going to be good. And, uh, and, and, the, and then in that house, I, I began to learn other things. Um, my neighbor came down because we built one house and then like right down the street on the other side of the street, we built our second house. So we knew the neighbors. We had one neighbor who wasn't a fan. I don't know why, she just no, wasn't a fan. I, you know, you have those neighbors, y'all ever got them? You know, one of those deals. And, 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 and they said, <laughs> one of my other neighbors said that, that they were walking around. And I had dug the foundation, right? I don't know if y'all ever seen it, but you, you, you put, put down two by fours and you use strings to make your lines and you get it all squared up and all that stuff. And, uh, and we had begun to dig the foundation, which by the way, I received three confirmations from other people that looked at me and said, you're going to build a house? I said, yeah. They'd be like, you're, really, like, you're going to build, have a builder built. No, I'm building a house. Like, you're going to do the stuff? And yeah, I'm going to do the stuff. And so they go, well, you better get that foundation right. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And then another, another guy, are you doing the foundation? Yeah, oh, you better get that right. If you don't get that right, the whole thing's going to be wrong. So, yeah, okay, I'm going to take that into consideration. And then another guy. But what they didn't know is when I first started doing construction, the only thing they'd let me do is dig foundations. So I'd done that. I felt pretty good about my ability to do that. But here's, here's the other thing. One, I could have looked at it that those people doubted. Always, always people will doubt that you can do what it doesn't look like you can do. But don't listen to people. If God is going to give you the ability to do something, he'll give you the ability to do something. Some people, right in this room, God's speaking something to you, and it sounds a little crazy, but he's going to give you the ability to do it. Amen? Here's another thing. Uh, one of my neighbors, this one I was telling you about, wasn't a fan. Another neighbor was walking with them, and she said to them, hey, you know what would be funny is if we moved the strings. <laughs> so the other thing is, is when the devil uh, wants to get in your business, sometimes they just use mean neighbors. <laughs> so just to double check your stuff while you're going along, right? Uh, they didn't, you know, but it was kind of funny to me that they would say that. But, uh, but yeah, that was just another funny little lesson in there. But the last one that I want to focus on that I mentioned was plans. You know, it's funny when I think about myself how often, uh, you know, I, I, I realize it. People will say, you built houses. Yeah, I built the house. Like, um, I did the electrical. I did the plumbing. I did you know, most stuff. I hate sheetrock. I didn't do that. Um, other things. But, but the bottom line is, yeah, I did those things that God's enabled me to do. But I was also wise enough to know the stuff that I'm not good at and get some help. Amen. You know, so sometimes you just got to get some help. The, one thing I think is that my second house had a beam going across at the roof. It's a ridge beam, they call it, in, in, in building. It was, it was uh, 12 inches wide, 2 inches thick, and 32 feet long. And my dad told me, I can't help you with that, bro. <laughs> and my wife said, I ain't even getting near that thing. And I was looking at it like, we need a crane and an army and all that stuff. But I actually hired these other two guys that might have been crazier than me, and they did it by hand. I mean, I helped them, but I was about, I was ready to bail at any moment. So, so th th there are times when you have to do that. But the, here's the deal, the plants. Think about your life, right? Because we're going to shift now into how we build our life. You, ha you have to plan, just like you have a set of house plans. Like when I went into the bank to get a loan, I'd have, a, have to have a set of house plans. Whenever I broke ground on the foundation, I had to know where to dig. You have to know how big to make it. How, and, and I realized when I was thinking about it, I said, you know what? I've never met anybody that told me I accidentally graduated college. <laughs> I've never met anybody that said I accidentally got my pilot license. Or I accidentally learned how to play guitar. They made a plan, right? And so for you and I, sometimes the challenge is, is to realize that you and I aren't created to just careen through life. We're not made just to kind of go with the flow because the flow isn't God. God is God. God's plan is God. God's direction is God. He has things that he wants us to do, his kingdom that he wants us to build, but sometimes we just kind of go along and we wonder why we feel like we're not getting anything done. It's because we, we didn't have a plan. We didn't have a purpose. We didn't have an end goal. And you and I sometimes, we, 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 realize, we fail to realize that, that, that there are some things that want to happen. So I want to share some scriptures with you, uh, and I want to make some points out of them, right? Uh, number one is Psalm 127. These will have to do with building, but, but we'll make it make sense. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. I'll stop there and tell you this, that, 
that this isn't just about houses. This can be anything. But, but the point being that there's a, there's a partnership, that, that the workers have to work, but the Lord is the one doing the building. Amen? That, that God is going to be in it, but, but we have our role in it. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It's useless for you to work so hard from early until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. I think another translation, if I, if I remember right, another translation says it, that, that God uh, gives, he gives increase or he, or he gives to those even while they're asleep. So that what, what we need to realize is that, is that when God, when we're doing the things that God wants us to do, it is not by the sweat of our brow and it's not grinding it out, working the skin off of our hands, pouring every last bit of energy. Whenever we're doing the things that God wants us to do, even while we're resting, he continues to work. Even while we're relaxing and, and, and we've met our end and we don't have anything else to give, God's continuing to give and he gives rest to us in that. Amen? And so that's, that's just a good, good truth about it is that, is that when God calls us to something, we can rely and understand that we have not a partner, we have the partner we need to, to meet the goal, to meet the plan. Amen? Exodus 36 says this. This was a scripture. I was just blown away by this, right? Because I'm telling you when... I, I, I don't know if I can convey with words uh, how much I didn't know. I mean, to tell you the truth, I'd probably not driven 20 nails in my life. I took wood shop. That was it. That was my construction experience. So I built the little flower holder. Some of you old guys remember, they don't do wood shop much anymore. But, you know, I built the step stool, and then I built the little plant holder, you know. And then when I, because I stuck with it for three years, I actually got to build a nightstand, you know. And when we got to do those. But other than that, you know, and none of that stuff do you use in, on a construction site. That's all just carpentry. Building is a little bit different, even though it involves some principles. But, but I, I realize this. In Exodus 36, um, he mentions this. He says, the Lord gifted Bezalel. Aholiab, and other skilled craftsmen with wisdom and ability to perform any task involved in building the sanctuary. Let them construct and furnish the tabernacle just as the Lord had commanded. God was particular about his temple. He had a plan. And when you want to think about a specific plan, dig in and find out what God was saying how to build the temple. It got down to every furnishing, every material, everything. And so he's, here's, here's the deal. No one had ever done this before. So he gifted them to do what he wanted done. Amen? So for us, sometimes when we feel like, hey, I don't really have much to offer, you can pray, hey, I want to be like these guys. I, I want you to gift me to do what it is you want me to do. I want you to divinely impart to me. And here's where I know that God was wanting to show me that he was no kidding with me and wanted to teach me something. I don't think he wanted to teach me how to build houses. I think he wanted to teach me all the stuff I, that only building a house could teach me, Right? had to do with patience, perseverance, uh, limitations. It had to do with learning about making plans and following through. It had, you know, the things about how to deal with storms and all those different things he was teaching me. But here's the deal. He also taught me that he's still able to do this because there were times when I would look at something and I couldn't figure out how to get it done. When my brother-in-law was busy farming and I needed to make progress and I didn't know how to do it, sometimes the only person, the only consultant I had, because this was pre-Google, the only consultant I had was, um, was to go, Lord, I, I don't know how to do this. Will you, will you help me? And sometimes I'd walk away and come back and all of a sudden I could just see how to do it. I could just see how, and I'm telling you, it was the weirdest, it kind of freaked me out a little bit, right? He said, well, if you do this, then, then this, and you go, wow, and you finish it up and and, and, you know, I'm going, my goodness, I can't believe I did that, right? That was cool. But then you realize that God is there as, as the one who can give you the wisdom, the skills, and the knowledge to do whatever it is he's calling you to do. That's a real thing. You don't need YouTube, believe it or not. It helps, but God's a better resource. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Those, uh, through the rain, though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey, it is foolish like a person who builds, on, builds a house on the sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Here's where I got to come to a little bit of confession. I didn't really know what I was doing, and I think I had a part in that first house blowing down. 
I could say that because the insurance paid a long time ago, and I think I passed the statute of limitations. But actually, they had sent an inspector out and made sure, and I had pictures and stuff of what I'd done. But the reality is, is that, is that you know, a house without the right kind of support and things, the way it's, the way a house works, it's just systems, right? And so, and so, I didn't use probably every system I could to make sure that that house was sturdy when that storm was coming. Amen. Uh, and so, so for, for me, my learning curve in that is that is that in our life, guys, we have to make sure as we're building our life, physical, spiritual, in our family, that, that we have to realize, number one, those farmers are right. That foundation matters. It's got to be right. It's got to be solid. And, that, and listen, the foundation we build our life on is Christ. What does that mean, right? That's hard to say. I'll build my life upon your love. I, you know, I'll do, we sing the songs. But what does it really mean? It means that God's precepts, his law, not, I'm not talking about like the Jewish law, all that religious law, but I'm saying the things that God says are true are true, and you can build on that. Amen? You can trust that. Everything else is going to be shifting sand, like the sand under that ladder when I fell a long way down. I'm not hurt over it anymore, but I was, right? Uh, I understand foundations after that. But the point is, is that, that we're always building. But here's the other point. Rains are going to come. And sometimes stuff is going to blow down. But the foundation remains if it's, if it's Christ. Amen? That, that, that when everything is said and done, you go, I might have to clear this whole thing up. But I still have something that, that wasn't damaged, that can't be damaged, and I have something to build on. Amen? Know that that's Jesus, or you'll chase meaningless philosophies your whole life. You, you'll, you'll, take, you'll take your cue from everybody that doesn't know what they're talking about if you don't believe that Christ and his word is the foundation. Uh, Luke 14, this one I can, boy, I can get in this one. Uh, don't begin until you count the cost. I got a story for that too. <laughs> for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might uh, complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. And they would say there's a person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. So my lesson in this one isn't as much about the money as it is. It says this. It says, it says that they would say there's a person that started the building and couldn't afford to finish it. Anytime you take a risk and do something that, that, it, that seems a little bit out there, there's always going to be a they watching you. And they're always going to be ready to laugh at you if it doesn't look like it goes right. Amen? You know, it was funny to me because, I mean, I, I, I kind of say I'm famous because I was in the Mount Olive Tribune whenever my house blew down. My house was anyway. They came by to snap a picture of my house that fell. And it's amazing how many visitors, how many of they came along the way and say, uh, how'd your house blow down? I'm like, it was 100 mile an hour winds. Oh, yeah. Probably didn't do something right. I'm like, I, didn't, I did everything I know to do. I don't know anything, but I did everything I knew to do, right? And so, so here's the deal. Whenever you take a risk, whenever you step out in faith, and whenever you engage in something that God's calling you to do, there's always going to be some day, and they are always going to be ready to tell you how you should have done something. Normally, the day that you don't want to listen to is the day that have never done anything on their own. They just want to sit around and talk about whatever everybody else is doing something is doing. Okay? So don't... Don't get hung up on, on what God's telling you to do, how impossible it looks or how unqualified you look. Jump on the bandwagon with God. Know that there's a foundation and say, hey, I, you know what, God, I'll trust you. And if, if I go down in a ball of flames, I'll go down pursuing you. I won't go down just watching other people do something in life. Amen. And, and so, you know, you, you sit back and you realize that. Now, the other part is you do have to count the costs, right? Uh, I. I will tell you this, this kind of reads back into that idea. This is why you have to have a plan, right? Because the plan helps you, number one, know not just your boundaries and your measurements, but sometimes if you don't follow the plan, it's going to affect everything else down the road. My first house I built, anybody like to plug stuff in? Y'all ought to go buy that house because there's an outlet about every foot and a half. My wife was like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I've lived in a house. There's like 50,000 circuits independent. You won't ever blow a breaker, and you won't ever need an extension cord in that house. <laughs> I, was just, I mean, when I was doing electrical, I'm like, I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here. I'm going to do this. And had it all planned out. Man, you could have you ran a small city out of that house because it wouldn't matter. You just have power everywhere, right? But later on, after I'd done that with the electrical, and with the plumbing and with the cabinets, it got time to paint. And I'm like, we ain't got no money. 
right? Where'd all the money go? I can't believe we've spent all the money, you know? And so finishing that house, man, it was like skin of our teeth just trying to get stuff done and, and, and make the bank happy and close the loan and get the inspectors out and all that stuff. But, but the point is, is that that's why you have to have a plan, right? Because if you don't have a plan, you're going to spend resources and energy in places that God doesn't want you to spend resources and energy in. If God calls you to do something, do that thing in detail. Don't, don't just fly out there and say, well, I'm just going to do it. Like, maybe the Lord's calling you, and I'll use school as an example. It's just easy. Maybe the Lord, you need to go to school. Well, you need to go to school, but you don't need to major in 14 different things. Right? I hope I didn't step on anybody's toes. I've changed up myself. But the point being that, that know what God's calling you to do. Amen? And, and make a plan and stick to it. Because God wants you to succeed. He wants to partner with you in it. And he wants to see you go on to what, what it is that, that, that he wants you to go on to. Amen? Amen? But don't be bound up by what they say. They will always be a detractor. God is the one that calls us to build a house. Amen? Let's see. All right. I'm going to run through what sounds like a really, really complicated set of scriptures. Okay? Uh, but trust me, I'm not going to teach all the way through this. I am going to try to make a point, though. It says this, it says, because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation. This is the Apostle Paul talking. I've laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. That's you and me. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay, a found, lay any foundation other than the one that we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through, the walls, through a wall of flames. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple, for God's temple is holy and you are the temple. So there's a lot to teach in here. But, but here's the point. I just want to make a couple. One, that the foundation that we build on now, I've built a couple houses. You know what that means? Nothing. Doesn't mean anything. It, it, building the houses only meant that God wanted to teach me something through building houses. Does that make sense? I learned more about God in building those houses than I probably would have anywhere else. And that's why he asked me to do it. I'm convinced. I don't even live in either one of them now. So, 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 so it's, it's not that big a deal. But what we, what we have is a foundation to build on. If you have chosen to follow Christ, God has you as a part of it. You're a builder in his kingdom. Somehow, some way. For, for me, I'm a pastor. It looks like this. For you, it's in your workplace. For you, it's in your school. For you, it's at your house, in your family, in your community. And it, and it matters that you realize that you're still a builder, that you're still adding to his kingdom. It takes obedience, and it also is worth noting that he says, be careful. Be careful what you're building. Why? Because it doesn't matter. Everything that we've done, it, it's going to be tested. Does that make sense? Everything. And so he, he mentions, you know, you can use gold, silver, jewels. Those things, they'll withstand a fire, they'll withstand the judgment. Wood, hay, and straw, probably not. They're going to burn up. But here's the deal. We have to choose how we want to build. We have to listen for what we want to build along with, what, with, God's, with God's direction. But the materials really represent the way we're going to go about it. The materials really have to do with our motives. They have to do with our heart in it, you know? Because it's in those things that as we build, you know what? Here's, here's what relieves me as a pastor. I am firmly convinced that God is not going to ask me how big was the church when you were pastoring it. I don't feel any pressure about that. You know, the scorecard is going to be different. You know, it, it, in the way we live now, people say, well, you know, what's the measurable thing? But what God's going to test is, is how did you deal with that person when they were hurting? You know what I'm saying? Uh, did you treat... Did you treat people with kindness? Did you love people? Did you teach them to love people? 
Did you give them my word? Those kind of things. Those are the things, those are the things that I had to build with. It's not so much, you know, building things like we think, but realizing that everything we do is going to go through a testing. So you can be successful in the world's eyes, but everything you build won't, won't last. And I can't say for sure, but this scripture almost points to the fact that, I don't know, I, I can't escape this impression when I pray about this scripture, that, that there's going to be some correlation between what we've done here and heaven. That, 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 that there is, there's a reward. It says it in here that, that there, there's a, I don't know if I'm bringing anything with me, uh, you know, a, a resemblance of it. I don't know what it is, but it does say this, that those things that I did that didn't withstand the fire, they're going to be gone. But what did because of that, there's going to be a reward. Man, that gives me some motivation to be the best I can be now. Amen. Like, like, you know, like, like we don't get the blank slate. It's not, well, you get to heaven and nothing ever mattered what you did. I don't think so. I think that we're in the game right now. I think that God cares about how are we pursuing him? How are we approaching building his kingdom? And not only that, what are the materials we're using? Are the materials love or greed? Are the materials, you know, is it, is it passion and compassion or is it self-interest? Those type of things. That's the material. Build with the good material. He tells you what it is. Do that. Amen? And what we build matters. It matters. But here's the beautiful thing. Here's, here's the relief in it. Because I, I am guilty of this. Let me explain this to you. I'm guilty of doing nothing because somewhere along the line, I, I believed a lie that nothing was better than failure. Nothing was better than failure. So to do nothing and be safe is better than to risk and fail. That's a lie. That's a lie. Here's the deal, because there's no risk. You know what it says? It says that even if what I build doesn't withstand judgment, that I'm still going to be okay. Now, I might be smoking and my hair might be all burnt up and all that. But the guy who barely made it, like, you know, like in the movies, there's the house is on fire and nobody's making it out. But then all of a sudden that guy comes through the door, right, and falls down. That's okay. If I make it that way, that's okay, too. You know, I don't want to, but that's okay, right? That's my reassurance. And that is this. Here's the deal. Our works matter, and they're going to be tested and evaluated. What we do. But the reality is, is that salvation is Jesus' work, and nothing can take that away. If I blow everything, his sacrifice gets me there. And that's the beauty of it. So now I'm free to enjoy, to risk, to try, to strive, and to say, Lord, stretch me. Stretch me. Tell me to do something crazy. I, I asked him that one time, and he did. And I don't know how ready I am to ask him again, because I don't know what it's going to look like, right? But, but the point being that in that is the greatest growth. That, that I've ever experienced. That, that the trick to pursuing God is simply this, pursuing God, asking him, listening for him, and realizing that sometimes when he speaks, it doesn't make any sense because he wants to challenge us and bring us into... How, how many of us love it when we say, God's doing a new thing? I do, except when he tells me to do a new thing. I want to do all the old things. I want to do the things I'm good at, right? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't, here's one, like, I'll just use this for example. I don't bake cakes. I like cakes, but I don't know how to bake cakes. So I have somebody else bake them, right? I don't want to do a new thing. You know what I'll cook? The things I cook well. That's what I'll eat, the things that I cook well. I'm not going to try. For some reason, we won't rely on the old thing, but we want God to do a new thing. Here's the deal. God's always wanting to do a new thing, but he's always looking for a good partner. And he's inviting you and I into that partnership. Amen? Here's the deal. I, um, I know this, that the number one thing that the Lord will stretch you in, in your life, is this, and many of you will attest to this, that that. You know, sometimes in church, we make it really easy to follow Jesus, to be saved. But I'm telling you, if I'm honest, it was a, it was a challenging, challenging thing for me to do what the preacher was asking me to do and to trust Jesus, who I really didn't know that well, with my life. Even when I didn't value my life that much, I knew that it was a precious thing. And I knew that it was going to be hard to trust and follow a God that I didn't know, a God that I really had some really messed up perceptions of. And so my invitation to you this morning is this, that you might be in here 
And you might be in a place that you're like, that's all great stories about building houses, bro, and all that, but I don't know about all this. Well, the first big step is to put your hands and your feet and your heart and your head in Christ, your whole life, every bit of you, to follow him. What are some good reasons to follow him? I'll tell you, because he speaks to you. He saves you. He leads you into adventures and things that you'd never get into without him. But I will say that I know that it's a challenge. It's tough. Here's the other part. He's already probably spoken to you if, if today is your day. That's one thing I know about him. He's already drawn you. Whether he drew you to come to church here, whether he's drawing you now, you know that there's something attractive about this Jesus that we talk about. Here's the deal. He's trustworthy. He's faithful. He's the God who, like we shared in communion this morning, invites you to sit and have a meal where he reveals everything about himself. The very end of the scripture that I read, the last scripture I read, uh, that, that passage ends in you know, that everything is yours. This is a God who's so generous that he gave his son, that he wants you to be with him. And he wants to enter into a relationship with you where he teaches you kind of like this stuff. I didn't want to share this story with you so you can call me and have me fi fix your shed. That's not why I did it. I don't, I don't need that kind of pressure, right? Uh, what I'm saying is, is, is that I shared it with you because I'm telling you, he'll take you into places that, that you couldn't believe that he would take you into. He'll gift you with talents you couldn't imagine that he would give you. And that's the God that's inviting you and I into, into a relationship with him. So if you're here this morning, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to pray with you. And I'd like to, for you to pray out loud with me. That's a stretch too. But it says this, that that you believe in your heart and then you confess with your mouth and you're saved. So here's the deal. I'm gonna pray. You can use my words. Pray right after me. You can do it online, whether you're by yourself or with some people. But if you're here, I'm gonna ask you this. Do, do this and boldly slip up your hand and just repeat this prayer after me. Just because I wanna know you're praying with me, that's all. If you're here this morning and you wanna receive Jesus, you wanna be saved, just slip your hand up. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, I thank you. Lord, I trust you. I've sinned, I've made the mistake. Plenty of them. But I need you to save me. I need you to walk with me and teach me and love me, forgive me, and do all the things that you promised to do. I'll give you my life because you say you'll give it back to me the way it's supposed to be. Forgive me for my sin. Fill me with your spirit. Teach me every minute of every day how to follow you. I ask you to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, that's good. That's good. Amen. God bless you guys.